Friends, we already have enough in the book of Amos to get us concerned. And certainly so did the people of the northern kingdom of Israel have plenty just from the first three chapters that should have given them pause. But now we press forward here and we have some words of God's indictment against them, some further words. And then a section in chapter four of the history of their lack of responsiveness to his entreaties and his correcting providences. And then finally, you know, what should they expect now that they have ignored him so much? What should they expect? So first, this indictment. It's interesting that it begins with these words. Hear this word, you cows of Bashan. Now, Bashan was a place near Galilee, actually. It was a place of fruitful fields, great places for cows to graze. And it says here that these cows of Bashan are, are some people that are on the mountain of Samaria. So they're in the northern kingdom. So we, we have here a bit of an allegory going on. It, these cows stand for somebody. And we know what this means because it goes on to say, who oppress the poor who crush the needy. So there are those who are rich, who are in power. And who are they? Here, here we, we find out. Who say to your husbands, bring that we may drink. So here are these very privileged women in positions of power in the northern kingdom, and they're abusing the poor, crushing the needy, and God hates this. And so he says, the Lord God has sworn, sworn by his holiness, that behold, the days are coming when they shall take you away with hooks. Again, this is going to be the Assyrians, but they shall take you away. You're going to go into exile instead of being the ones who are the powerful matrons uh, of northern Israel. You will be people being carried away into exile. And it says, even the last of you with fish hooks. So when we think of in the Gospels, when Jesus says, I'm going to make you fishers of men. Well, the Assyria, uh, Assyrians were fishers of men, but not in the same way. Not with the good news of the kingdom, no, but in the way that man oppressed man and empire rules over weaker nations. They came with their fish hooks and they're going to grab people, even these, these privileged women, and they're going to take them into exile. And they're going to have to be led through the breaches and the wall in a very devastating time. So the indictment, though, continues with a mention of their idolatrous worship. Come to Bethel and transgress to Gilgal and multiply transgressions. What are they doing there? They're offering sacrifices, but they're doing this to idols and it's unauthorized worship in places where they think that they're doing the most religious thing. They, hey, they pay their tithes there. They offer sacrifices. And, and the Lord says, so you love to do. You're doing the wrong thing. Now, then a whole section on the history of their unresponsiveness to divine correction over and over again. He said, look, I took away your bread. You don't seem to pay attention. I take away rain. I put, I give rain to one city and not to another, to one field and not to another. You're not noticing what's going on. We have people wandering all over trying to trying to find food. You don't seem to notice that I'm doing something. You do not return to me. It says over and over again, you do not return to me. Uh, pestilence, locusts, um, young men dying in, in uh, acts of warfare, uh, yet you do not return to me. Um, and, you know, I I overthrow people in your midst. I, I take you as a brand plucked from the from the fire like a burning stick that out of the rest, uh, the only one that's not burnt, and, and you don't return to me. So what you, you expect, this is what it says. Therefore, thus I will do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you, prepare to meet your God, O Israel. What, what's he going to do? He's, he's going to come, but not 
with gentleness and not with, you know, with somehow an answer of a way out of this problem, but he's going to come in judgment. And who is their God? He's, behold, he's the one who forms the mountains, creates the wind. He declares to man what, what is his thought. He knows everything. Who makes the morning darkness and treads on the heights of the earth. The Lord God of hosts is his name. So, look, how can, how can we have hope in the midst of this? Only through substitution. Not through somehow some self-improvement plan. It's not going to happen. Only through substitution. Father, thank you for our substitute. The one who fully obeyed your law. The one who learned reverence through suffering and died for our sins as the perfect substitute. We're grateful, Father. We receive him in faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessings, friends.